So over the past week or so, we've been one of the few sources covering Tara Reid and her credible allegations against Joe Biden. And while some sources in the mainstream media, not enough, have been covering this story in a limited fashion, there's no denying that it's gone systematically undercovered at large, especially because of the seriousness of the allegations and because Joe Biden himself is running for president. He's a former vice president. He's a former senator. This should be wall-to-wall news news across all the cable networks. Yes, even during this crisis, and it just isn't, and that is shocking and deeply disappointing to me. But there's some more developments in this story, and it relates to the hypocrisy of some of Biden's most high-profile supporters. As I noted in a previous video, there's a lot of comparisons you can make between Brett Kavanaugh, the current Supreme Court Justice nominated by Donald Trump, and Joe Biden. Both men were incredibly powerful, and both men on the cusp of a brand new high office were credibly accused by a woman with allegations from long ago about assault. They actually face similar tales. And while Christine Ford's allegations were the subject of global attention, and rightfully so, Tara Reid is being systematically ignored by most large media sources, by most cable networks, and on and on and on. And I have to say that I don't agree with that discrepancy. And a lot of Biden's supporters are starting to realize just how loud their hypocrisy has been, and they're trying to scrub it. If you look at Jill Filipovich, she's a noted feminist writer, she's a big-time lawyer, she started a feminist blog back in the day, and if you note Simone Sanders, who is a paid advisor on the Biden campaign, both of them have gone back on Twitter, gone back on social media, and scrubbed prior mentions of Brett Kavanaugh because they know that in those tweets, they were holding Brett Kavanaugh to account and crucially, they were criticizing the defenders of Brett Kavanaugh, the people who were excusing his actions, who used tropes, anti-woman tropes to try to discredit Dr. Christine Ford. And they're doing the same things and Biden's supporters are doing the same things right now to Tara Reid. And so when it came to choose between sticking up for your supposed values, which is to say when women are brave enough to come forward and criticize powerful men, we should believe them. They actually discarded that, deleted those tweets and went ahead and continued to defend Joe Biden. Because if it was a choice between sticking to their values and being able to defend their guy because it's their team that's on the defensive with regard to allegations, they clearly chose the latter. Now, the internet never fully forgets, especially when you're famous. So people have been able to dig up examples of these tweets, screenshots. Some of them were included in media articles when the Kavanaugh story was at its apex. Some of them also wrote, you know, articles in high profile newspapers online and what have you, where they criticized Brett Kavanaugh, saying they believe Dr. Ford praising the Me Too movement for doing a crucial job at that juncture, and also, again, criticizing the tropes used to discredit Ford and to defend Kavanaugh. Those are still available if you know how to look for them. If you do some searches on Twitter, you'll see them pop up. But the point is, some of Biden's strongest and most high-profile supporters, people who have long identified as champions of women's justice, feminism, gender equality, the dignity and safety of all women, felt it made more sense to go back and delete some of that activism so that they could defend Joe Biden despite what he did to Tara Reid and perhaps to as many as eight other women, seven or eight other women. It really does show the cynicism of elite quote unquote feminist mainstream liberals because they don't actually give a damn about working class women, regular women, and what happens to them if the men that are doing things to them are on their team. They have a little D next to their name. They wear a blue tie instead of a red tie. Then those women are disposable. Those women are in a sense sacrificed to the power
power ambitions of the party and of the powerful men that head up that party. No different, not the least bit different from the calculations Republican supporters made when they chose to ignore the allegations levied against Kavanaugh by Christine Ford. And as I noted in a previous video, if anything, the Biden story is worse than the Kavanaugh story. It is even more egregious because Christine Ford's accusations against Kavanaugh come from a time where they were both young people, neither of whom reached the apex of their careers, neither of whom had immense social or political or legal or economic power over the other. None of that really existed yet. Whereas Joe Biden, going back to 1993, when Tara Reid's accusations stem, he was a senator. He was one of the world's most powerful men because he was one of America's most powerful men. And if you add to the fact that Tara Reid was his employee, he had a direct and indirect power imbalance over her. Much different and worse than the Kavanaugh story. And I'm not trying to excuse the Kavanaugh story, nor am I trying to make he was young, boys will be boys argument. I'm making neither of those points, but I will say that the Biden story is worse. It is a bigger example of why Me Too and Time's Up need to exist. Specifically, these organizations existed to help those women who had resources, whether it was material or cultural or political or social imbalances relative to the men they were accusing to give them a level playing field. And when you're talking about senators, when you're talking about vice presidents, when you're talking about people who are being crowned premature as it is as the nominee for president for the Democratic Party, I can't think of a person that needs to be held to account by the people who say Me Too encompasses their values more than Joe Biden, and they're silent. They're going back and they're deleting their social media. They're trying to scrub the internet so they don't look like a hypocrite. But here's the deal. All you Biden supporters that said anything supportive of Christine Ford or anything critical of Brett Kavanaugh, we see you. We see your hypocrisy, we see your cynicism, and we see the fact that you don't give a damn about women. We know that. And we know that when mainstream neoliberals will try to say that it's the Bernie bros that don't care about women, we have proof now, even more than we did before, that it's the democratic socialist wing of the Democratic Party. It's the progressive movement that's trying to hold people to account, whether they're Republicans or Democrats, when they have accusations levied by people like Christine Ford or Tara Reid.